treatment uh, for drug abuse. So let's go ahead and get started. Chemical dependency is more prevalent and has a greater impact on society than mental illness. 26% have any mental uh, disorder every year. 16.4% have anxiety disorder every year. 7.1% have mood disorder every year. 1.3% have schizophrenia every year. Nervous system diseases, brain tumors, physical head injuries. 22 million Americans, 9.1%, abuse or are dependent on alcohol or illicit drugs. 29% of the population suffers from nicotine addiction. 2-6% to 6 of the population suffers from gambling addiction. Many see chemical dependency as the number one continuing physical health problem in the United States. 440,000 Americans die prematurely every year due to nicotine addiction. 53,000 Americans die from secondhand smoke. 130,000 Americans die prematurely every year from alcohol usage and its associated diseases. 30, 35 to 40% of all hospital admissions are due to nicotine related health problems. 25% of uh, hospital admissions are related to health problems related to alcohol. Last year, 69,029 people died of an overdose on drugs. There were 48,320 opiate opioid overdose deaths. Nearly half of all overdose deaths, 47%, were due to fentanyl or other synthetic opioids besides methadone. More than one in five of all overdose deaths, 22%, were due to heroin. There were 20,709 overdose deaths from other drugs than opiates opioids. More than one in five of all overdose deaths, or 23%, were due to cocaine. An estimated one in five of all overdose deaths were due to methamphetamine or other psychostimulants with, uh, with uh, abuse potential. For the past several years, West Virginia has had the highest death rate for d drug overdoses of any state, with a rate of nearly 58 overdose deaths per 100,000 population in uh, 2017. Comparing that to the COVID-19 crisis, New York currently has a death rate of 275,000 out of one, or 275 out of 100,000, while New Jersey has a death rate of 299. Uh, per 100,000, and New Mexico has a death rate of 209 per 100,000. And of course, those are old statistics. Research is currently being conducted on treatment techniques. One direction that research is taking is the use of medications to treat detoxification, control withdrawal symptoms uh, such as phenobarbital for alcohol withdrawal, uh, antipsychotics to control stimulant-induced psychosis, to reduce craving, bromocryptine and bu bu bupropene uh, for stimulants, naltrexone, buprenorphine and clonidine for heroin, naltrexone and acomprosate for alcohol. To promote short and long-term abstinence, to substitute medications that are less damaging, nutritional supplements, antidepressants. Research that is currently being conducted, researchers are being are using uh, imaging machines and other diagnostic techniques to visualize the structural and physiological effects of addiction on the human brain. CAT scans, MRIs, functional MRIs, PET scans, SPECT scans, single photon uh, emission computerized tomography scans, uh, development of more effective tools to diagnose addiction, uh, cage tests, addiction that uh, measure addiction and alcohol severity index, American Society of Addiction Medicine Patient Placement Criteria. Research that is currently being conducted, researchers are looking for evidence-based uh, best practices in treatment, the 13-point criteria to measure treatment efficacy, one randomized clinical trial has shown 
has shown the treatment effective. Uh, treatment shows effectiveness in several replicated studies. The treatment targets uh, behavior that is generally present. The treatment can be used in similar regions and populations. The treatment is feasible, inexpensive, and group supported. The key components of the treatment are easily understood. The treatment is accepted by providers and clients. The treatment is based on a clear and articulated theory. The method of, uh, of treatment ensures consistency of delivery. The treatment can be evaluated. The treatment shows good retention rates for clients. The treatment addresses cultural diversity in di different populations. The treatment can be used by staff with differing training. The National Registry of Evidence-Based Programs and Practices currently identifies 160 treatments and programs that have been shown to be effective for the treatment of addiction. Uh, unfortunately, this emphasis on evidence-based treatments and program decreases the appreciation for the practice-based treatments, such as Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, or any other 12-step fellowship pro, uh, model. Research that is currently being conducted, research uh, supports coerced treatment as being just as effective as treatment, uh, as voluntary treatment. All 50 states operate drug court programs. Uh, 100,000 people have entered drug uh, court with a success rate of 50 to 65 percent. Felony offenders are kept twice as long. Court programs maintain closer supervision. There is the continued threat of incarceration. The drug treatment alternative to prison program in New York ha have reduced the rate of re-arrest by 33%, reconviction rates by 45%, and return to prison rates of 87%. Most of these, uh, that's return to rate Re return to prison rates are known as recidivism. Most of these programs have uh, shown a reduction of cost as compared to incarceration costs. Research into the lack of resources to provide treatment that has, has been proven effective. On the average, states uh, spend about 13% of their budgets to combat the effects of, of drugs, alcohol, and uh, cigarette abuse. Research shows that every, uh, for every treatment dollar spent, the state saves between four to thirty-nine dollars on prison costs, lost time on job, health problems, and extra social uh, service costs. Sufficient treatment doesn't exist for those that want it. There are only uh, so many slots and monies allocated for treatment. In fact, treatment facilities actually dec declined during the Bush years from 15,230 in 1999 to 13,367 in 2005 and 13,585 in 2017. Re research is enjoying the, enjoining the debate between the abstinence-oriented recovery philosophy and the harm reduction philosophy. Research in the 1990s found that 95% of the recovered addicts who did not practice a complete abstinence philosophy went into full relapse. But many of the people in the addiction treatment field see harm reduction as a, a more realistic alternative. Drug replacement therapy, needle exchange programs, designated driver non-drug using uh, driver programs, substituting less harmful drugs for more harmful ones, providing testing of drugs for users so they won't uh, use uh, deadly levels without knowing, decriminalizing, legalizing drugs, controlling drinking and drug use through behavior modification. The California Drug and Alcohol Treatment Assessments, uh, CALDAT, data uh, study was conducted in the middle 1990s to determine if the treatment programs being used in California were effective and cost efficient. The study followed 1,850 addicts for th uh, three to five years after addiction treatment. No additional crimes were seen in 74% of the addicts followed. Complete abstinence was practiced in just under 
the savings for the state was between $3 to $6, depending on the treatment used. Treatment was the most effective when the patients could be treated for at least six to eight months consecutively. The shorter the time in treatment, the poorer the outcome. Group therapy worked better than individual therapy. The type of psychoactive substance used made a difference. When alcohol was a primary drug, treatment was twice as effective as that for heroin. Cocaine treatment was less effective than alcohol, but more effective than heroin. Treatment outcomes were better if it was sensitive to cultural norms. The Drug Abuse Treatment Outcome Study, DATOS, was conducted from 1991 to 1993, tracking 10,010 uh, drug abusers in 100 treatment programs in 11 cities. The study ran pre- and post-treatment levels on drug use, criminal activity, employment, thoughts of suicide, Treatment programs included outpatient methadone programs, long-term several-month residential programs, short-term up to 30 days inpatient programs, and outpatient drug-free programs. Dados results showed that use of all drugs after treatment was reduced 50 to 70 percent. The two residential programs seemed to have the greatest effect. The more severe the patient's problems, type, and level of drugs used, the lower the retention rate. Most of these patients claimed that they didn't get the level of care that they needed. The study also found a trend toward a reduction of services offered. Now you have to remember when this was. This was 91 through 93. And they were cutting back. <clears throat> Treatment episode data set, TEDS, from the Drug and Alcohol Services Information System, DASIS, is funded by uh, SAMHSA uh, and collects data on uh, patients from all 50 states, the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. Part of this research is the National Survey of Substance Abuse Treatment Services, NSATS, which looks at the treatment facilities. Treatment Research Institute at the University of Pennsylvania wrote a study in 2005 that did a meta-analysis of more than 1,000 addiction treatment studies over two decades. The study determined that the savings ranged from $0.33 cents to $39. <clears throat> savings came from decreased crime, post-treatment reduction, or of health care costs. There are 2,193,798 Americans in federal, state, and local prisons. 11% of these prisoners are women. There are 5 million Americans on probation or parole. 57% of federal inmates and 20% of state inmates are serving sentences for drug offenses. 11.5% were arrested for a drug abuse violation. 1.6 million arrests. 1.2 million of these were up for possession. 40 to 65 percent of those in prison committed crimes under the influence of alcohol or drugs. 24 percent of the people on probation were arrested for drug law violation, and 17 percent were driving while intoxicated. The average time served was increased from 22 to 27 months. Despite the high percentage of inmates incarcerated for drug-related problems, there are only slots for about 10 percent of those with serious problems. Even though 94% of the federal prisons have treatment programs, even though 56% of the state prisons have treatment program, programs, even though 33% of jails provide some on-site substance use treatment for their inmates, fewer than 17% of incarcerated offenders with drug problems have received treatment while in prison. No single treatment is appropriate for all individuals. Selecting the right treatment for the individual situation is key in success. Treatment must be available when it is needed. Effective treatment attends to all of the individual's needs, not just their drug use. The treatment plan must be assessed continually. The individual must remain in treatment for an adequate amount of time for effectiveness. Individual and group counseling as well as behavioral therapies are critical to effective treatment. 
Medications are an important component of treatment for many patients. Addicted and mentally ill individuals must have both disorders treated in an integrated way. Detoxification is the first stage in addiction treatment. Of itself, detoxification will not change long-term drug use. Treatment uh, need not be voluntary to be effective. Possible drug use during treatment must be monitored continually. Uh, infectious diseases that might have been contracted while using drugs should be screened. Uh, HIV, hepatitis B and C, and tuberculosis. Recovery might require multiple treatment episodes. Treatment in the criminal justice uh, system maintains a similar set of treatment principles. Drug addiction is a brain disease that affects behavior. Recovery from addiction requires effective treatment. Treatment must be long enough to produce stable behavioral changes. Assessment is the first step in treatment. Services should be tailored to fit the individual's needs. Drug testing must be done during treatment. Treatment must also aim to change criminal behavior. Treatment plans must be aware of correctional requirements. Treatment in the criminal justice system maintains a similar set of treatment principles. Continuity of care must be continued when the individual reenters the community. Treatment should include rewards and sanctions. Integrated treatment should be developed for individuals suffering from addiction and mental illness. Medication should be an important part of treatment. Chronic and serious medical conditions should be prevented or treated. Most, most treatment specialists understand that addiction treatment is a lifelong treatment for the addict. The primary goal for addiction treatment is motivation to, to abstinence, uh, creating a drug-free lifestyle, uh, supporting goals, enriching job and or career functioning, optimizing medical functioning, optimizing psychiatric and emotional functioning, addressing relevant spiritual issues. Programs sin, uh, tend <laughs> to, select, uh, to be selected uh, based on cost, familiarity, location, and convenience of access. Evidence-based assessment tools are mandated to match addicts to appropriate level of care. The DSM-5 maintains two diagnoses that deals with substance-related disorders which relies on pattern and duration of use and the negative impact on the individual, substance abuse and substance dependence. Diagnosis, mis, uh, diagnosis assessment tools, the National Council on Alcoholism Criteria for Diagnosis of Alcoholism, uh, NCA uh, CRIT, and its modified criteria, Mod CRIT, uh, assesses 35 items through a structured interview to determine physical and clinical parameters, behavioral, psychological, and attitudinal impact. The Addiction Severity Index, ASI, uh, 200 items, covers six areas of use and abuse. Michigan Alcoholism Screening Tests, uh, 25 yes-no questions that deal with the negative impact of alcohol on the user. A brief MAST exists that only has uh, 10 questions. Uh, the MAST, uh, add MAST test for alcohol and drugs. The MSAPS, uh, Substance Abuse uh, Program Scale. The SMAST G, short uh, version of the MAST for geriatrics. Uh, CAGE questionnaire, four questions. Have you, left, <laughs> have you felt the need to cut down on your drinking? Do you feel annoyed with people complaining about your drinking? Do you ever feel guilty about your drinking? Do you ever drink an eye-opener in the morning to relieve the shakes? The 10-item uh, screen that cover oh, diagnosis of the audit, 10-item uh, screen that covers frequency, daily amount, incidence of six or more drinks, uh, inability to stop, inability to fulfill normal expectations, whether you're taking it, drinking an eye-opener in the morning, uh, guilt uh, or remorse, blackouts and brownouts, suffered or uh, injured someone while drinking. Others suggested moderating your drinking. CRAFT stands for driving a car while high, uh, use to relax, use alone, forget things while high, 
family and or friends ask you to cut down and have gotten into trouble while on the drug, uh, alcohol and drugs. Uh, RAPS 4, uh, Rapid Alcohol Assessment Screen, has four items, guilt, blackouts, failing uh, normal expectations, and eye-opener. Eye-opener is a biggie, uh, and we're going to see this in just about every screening test. Are you drinking an eye-opener in the morning just to get going? SAST, uh, Self-Administered Alcoholism Screening Test, has 35 yes-no questions. The TAs, uh, Tolerance Annoyed, uh, Cut Down, and Eye Opener. <clears throat> the Tweak, you've built up a tolerance to alcohol, you're worried, do you have, a, do you have an eye opener, uh, do you suffer from amnesia, and Cut Down, do you sometimes feel the need to cut down on your drinking? The DAS, the Drug Abuse Screening Test, 20-item scale. The PESQ, Personal Experience Screening Questionnaire, 18 questions, determines problem onset, psychological and social functioning, uh, problem frequent, uh, severity, and frequency of use. The four P's plus uh, are parental history of alcohol or drug problems, partner's use of alcohol or drugs, the past uh, personal history of alcohol use and use of alcohol or tobacco the months before pregnancy. This has to do with a uh, screening test for women who are pregnant. ASAM PPC 2R, the American Society of Addiction Medicine Patient Placement Criteria Revised, evaluates six dimensions of problem areas and illness severity. Acute intoxication withdrawal potential, biomedical conditions and complications, emotional, behavioral, or cognitive conditions and complications, readiness to change, relapse, continued use, or continued problem potential, recovery environment. These are matched to uh, four levels of care, outpatient treatment, intensive outpatient partial hospitalization, residential inpatient treatment, and medically managed intensive inpatient treatment. Treatment options from cold turkey or white knuckle to dry outs, uh, dry outs uh, to medically assisted detoxification for expensive medical or residential approaches uh, to free peer groups, 12-step programs, or social model group therapy. From outpatient treatment to halfway houses to residential programs, uh, from long-term residential treatment, two years or more, to seven-day hospital detoxification with aftercare, from methadone maintenance, replacement therapies, or other harm reduction techniques, to acupuncture, aversive, aversion therapies, or a dozen other treatment modalities. Medical model detoxification programs can be either inpatient, residential, or outpatient. Supervised and managed by medical personnel, medications can be administered along with more traditional counseling. These tend to be the most expensive types of programs. They can last as long as needed, up to six months. And Betty Ford, of course, the Betty Ford Center uh, is one of those. Residential inpatient treatment tends to be short-term, up to 28 days. Intensive counseling, medically managed and drug counseling, partial hospitalization and day treatment, outpatient medical model uh, programs, four to six hours a day, patient lives at home, detoxification counseling, drug education. Methadone maintenance programs cost between 4,000 to 6,000 per year. Office-based medical detoxification and maintenance treatment for opiate abusers uh, can be done by qualified medical practitioners social model detoxification programs, non-medical, residential, or outpatient, social model recovery programs, cognitive behavioral therapy, insight-oriented psychotherapy, problem-solving groups, 12-step programs. Therapeutic communities, self-contained residential programs, long-term, one to three years, uh, habilitation or rehabilitation, 
of the total individual, uh, changing negative, negative patterns of behavior and thinking as well as feeling that predisposes drug use, uh, development of drug-free lifestyle, three major stages, induction and early treatment, committing to the recovery process, primary treatment, re-entry into the community at large. Halfway houses permit addicts to keep their jobs and outside contacts while being involved in a residential treatment program, receive educational and therapeutic interaction, live within the safety of the facility, external triggers are minimized, non-work days are, are reserved for intensive interaction, Several new religious movements and faith-based treatment initiatives use the halfway house approach. Sober living and transitional living programs are generally for clients who have com uh, completed a long-term residential program. They may live in apartments or cooperatives for groups of recovering addicts. Minimal to moderate treatment structure provides a structured environment to help the addict re-enter the uh, broader society from the structured support. Harm reduction programs, uh, replacement therapy, controlled drinking, partial detox clinics, and sobering stations. Recognition and acceptance of one's addiction may come in two ways. Self-diagnosis, usually after the addict has hit bottom, and intervention of your friends and family. Addicts and alcoholics rarely accept the diagnosis of their addiction uh, from others. Uh, coerced treatment via the criminal justice sanctions can uh, actually help addicts realize that they have hit bottom. Hitting bottom, addiction is a progressive illness that leads to severe life impairment and dysfunction when left to proceed without disruption. The earlier, the earlier an addiction is recognized, accepted, and treated, the more likely the addict will have a rewarding life and good health. Everyone has a different sense of what hitting bottom is. The individual does not have to hit bottom to accept that they have a chemical dependency problem and participate in treatment. Denial, overcoming denial is the essential first step in all treatment. Denial is a refusal to acknowledge the negative impact that the drug use is having on the individual's life. It is not uncommon for the medical profession to deny or overlook a patient's addiction. The toxic effects of drugs uh, being used creates judgment and memory problems, making the addict the last person to recognize and accept their addiction. Addiction is the only illness that requires a self-diagnosis for treatment to be effective. Denial can be broken through by legal intervention, workplace intervention, physical health problems, pregnancy, mental health problems, financial difficulties. Referrals in the United States, uh, self-referral 33.6%, criminal justice system referral 36.1%, Substance abuse provider referral, 10.2%. Healthcare provider uh, referral, uh, 7%. Uh, school referral, 1.1%. Employer, uh, employer ref referral, 0.7%. And other community referrals, 11.2%. Intervention strategies have been developed to attack the denial in drug abusers and at addicted people. Love and intervention should always start and end with an expression of love and genuine concern. Facilitator, the intervention should be organized by a professional intervention specialist or a knowledgeable chemical dependency treatment professional. Intervention statements, each team member will prepare a statement that he or she will make to the addicted person at the intervention a declaration of how much they love, care for, and respect the user, specific incidents they have personally witnessed or experienced related to the addiction and the pain they have personally experienced because of the incidents, personal knowledge that the incidents occurred not because of the user's intent but because of the drug's uh, effects on the user's behavior, reassurance of their love, concern, and respect for the user, with a strong request that he or she recognize and accept the illness and enter treatment immediately. 
An anticipated defenses and outcomes, the facilitator prepares the team to deal with expected defense mechanisms, denial, rationalization, minimization, anger, accusations. Have the addict's bags packed and ready to go. Intervention, timing, uh, location, and surprise are crucial components of the actual intervention. Neutral, it must be a neutral site, uh, non-threatening, it must be private. The addict should be sober. Evidence should include current incidents. Order of the statement should be rehearsed prior to the, uh, the intervention. Contingency. Whether the intervention is successful or not, the members of the intervention team should continue to meet after the intervention. There is always the possibility that an unsuccessful intervention will result in anger and rejection. Treatment continuum, recovery for the addict will be gradual as the client undergoes several changes no matter which therapy is, is used. Detoxification, initial abstinence, long-term abstinence, sobriety, continuous recovery. Relapse needs to be accepted but not excused in recovery. The relapse should be aggressively processed by the client and the counselor to recognize its causes and identify strategies that might help to prevent future ones. Detoxification, it takes about a week to completely excrete a drug such as cocaine and perhaps another four weeks to 10 months until the body chemistry settles down. The initial detoxification often includes a process called white knuckling where the abuser uh, stops taking the drug on their own and has to suffer through physical and mental withdrawal symptoms. Medically or chemically assisted detoxification is aimed at minimizing withdrawal symptoms. The need of medical detoxification will be based on the severity of the addiction. Medication therapy for detoxification. Uh, clonidine dampens withdrawal symptoms of opioids, alcohol, and nicotine. Phenobarbital prevents withdrawal seizures and other symptoms of alcohol and sedative hypnotic uh, dependence. Methadone is a long-acting opioid uh, used in opioid detoxification. Bu buprenorphine uh, is used for short-term opioid detoxification. Naltrexone blocks the effects of opioids. Medication therapy for detoxification, psychiatric medications, antipsychotics, halperidol is a good example of that, uh, antidepressants, tricyclics, desipramine and amipramine, uh, also known as Tofranil, uh, SSRIs, Prozac, and Zoloft. Uh, they have been used in the initial detoxification of cocaine, cocaine, amphetamines, and any other stimulant addiction. Medication therapy for detoxification, bromocryptine, uh, parlodel, uh, amantadine, uh, semitril, uh, L-DOPA are used to treat the cravings of cocaine and other stimulants. A compressate uh, decreases alcohol cravings. Uh, Vernicline, uh, or better known as Chantix, and Bupropion, uh, better known as Zyban, lessens the cravings of nicotine. Nicotine patches, such as Nicoderm and Prostep, uh, lessens the withdrawal symptoms of nicotine. Nicorette helps lessen craving. Uh, and abuse prevents relapse by reacting to alcohol with nausea and vomiting. Amino acid uh, lessens uh, amino acids lessens cravings and withdrawal. Since addiction involves voluntary and in involuntary activity in the brain, detoxification alone will not lead to a successful treatment. The addict must also go through intensive counseling to change the way they think and feel about the addictive substance. The aim of counseling treatment is to break down residual denial. Treatment teaches the addict about the disease concept of addiction. <coughs> Excuse me. Once the addict has been detoxified, the body's chemistry must be allowed to re regain balance. The addict will go through uh, endogenous cravings, cravings brought about by the depletion of brain neurotransmitters brought about by the drug. The addict will also go through post-acute withdrawal symptoms, uh, emotional and physical symptoms that appear 
after major withdrawal symptoms have subsided. But they may persist for 6 to 18 months, but have been known to last for up to 10 years. Pause is the major con uh, contributor to relapse. Pause is the result of a combination of brain neuron damage caused by drug use and psychological stress of living drug and alcohol free after many years of a drug using lifestyle. Sleep disturbance, memory problems, inability to think clearly, anxiety and hypersensitivity to stress, inappropriate emotional reactions and mood swings, physical coordination difficulties. Environmental triggers often precipitate drug cravings. Uh, interpersonal factors, internal influences such as negative emotions and physical states that can be controlled by psychoactive substance usage. Interpersonal factors, external influences, relationship conflicts, social pressures, lack of support systems, negative life events, slippery people, places, and things. Relapse prevention is part of every uh, treatment program. Addicts learn to recognize their personal triggers. Drug odors, seeing friends who use, uh, having money in one's pocket, uh, hearing a song about drugs. Uh, the addict must develop behaviors to avoid external cues. The addict is trained to be prepared with an automatic reflex strategy to prevent them from using their craving uh, from being activated by the internal or external cues. Addicts start putting their lives back in, in order in the initial abstinence phase. Addicts need to build a support system that will give them continuing ad advice, help, and information. Long-term abstinence can only be maintained by most addicts with continued participation in group, family, and 12-step programs. The addict must uh, accept the fact that addiction is chronic, progressive, incurable, and potentially fatal. Relapse is always a possibility. Compulsive drug users often switch intoxicants only to find the symptoms resurfacing through another addictive agent. Experts suggest that the addict stay away from all compulsive behaviors. Recovery can only be achieved by restructuring their lives and find things they enjoy doing that gives them satisfaction and natural highs instead of artificial highs they have experienced through drugs. Offering the addict a substitute dependency, such as exercise, remind the addict that one episode of drug use can lead to relapse. Repairing the social and psychological damage done restores self-esteem. Individuals have the capability to produce the same feelings and sensations naturally that they uh, get from drugs. Athletic competition releases the same neurotransmitters experienced with cocaine and methamphetamine. Runners high activates the same receptor sites as opiates. Traveling or experiencing new environment activities, the same novelty centers in the brain that are stimulated by marijuana. Indicators of success treatment, uh, successful treatment includes duration of continuous sobriety, ab ability to stay in treatment, completion of a treatment uh, plan, uh, family functioning, social and environmental adjustments, vocational or educational functioning, uh, personal finance management, uh, and criminal activity. Individual therapies explore the reasons for the addicts. Uh, this is uh, individual versus group therapy. Uh, individual uh, therapies explore the reasons for the addicts continuing use of psychoactive substances and identify all areas of intervention uh, needs with the aim of changing the client's behavior. Cognitive behavioral therapy, re reality therapy, aversion therapy, psychodynamic therapy, art therapy, uh, assertiveness training, motivational interviewing or enhancement, social skills training. Motivational interviewing and motivational enhancement therapy, this technique uses a non-confrontational style to help them change ambivalence about drug use and the desire to change. They, they express empathy, they allow resistance to happen and explore it, uh, they develop a discrepancy between what is used and what is had, and support self-efficacy. 
With motivational interviewing and motivational enhancement, the client will go through five stages. Pre-contemplation, where they will not admit that they have a problem. Contemplation, where the client begins to think that they have a problem. Determination, where the client decides to do something about their problem. Action, where the client chooses a, chooses a strategy. And maintenance, where the client actively works on maintaining their strategy. Group therapy helps the clients break the isolation that chemical dependency induces. Facilitated uh, groups consist of six or more clients who meet daily, weekly, or monthly. Peer groups have the same structure as the facilitated group, but the less direction from the therapist. Self-help groups are not facilitated by therapists, but are maintained by, lay peer, by a lay peer. Uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, Crystal Meth Anonymous, Cocaine Anonymous, uh, Marijuana Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, Sexaholics Anonymous, and Debtors Anonymous. Addiction is a family disease as it impacts all the members of the family. The addict's family is often ignored and neglected in the pursuit of the pleasure or oblivion that is caused by the drug. Addicts very, are very selfish people. Family members must accept the addiction as a treatable disease. The family must establish a drug-free family system. The family must develop a system for family communication. The family must process the uh, readjustment. Family approaches, family systems approach, uh, focuses on daily routines, family rituals, and short-term problem-solving strategies. Family uh, behavioral approach uh, focuses on the behaviors peculiar to the family associated with drug use. Family functioning approach seeks to repair the functioning of the family to prevent relapse from the addict. Social network approach, the family breaks their isolation and develops uh, skills to seek support to the, in their recovery effort. Tough love approach, family sets limits for their interaction with the, with the addict. Codependents are dependent on the addiction of the uh, addict to fulfill some need that they have. The addiction may allow the non-addicted par partner to control the relationship. The addiction may allow the non-addict to overlook their own shortcomings or problems. The non-addicted partner promotes the addiction and becomes part of the dysfunction. Uh, in order to promote recovery, the codependency must be articulated and their behavior changed. Families caught in a circumstance of addiction and denial will often dance around the problem rather than confront the addict head on. Uh, this refusal to deal with the problem actually helps the addict maintain their addiction. This form of mass denial perpetuating the addictive behavior is referred to as enabling. Children of addicts develop enabling roles that eventually become ingrained as maladaptive behavioral patterns that are perpetuated into adulthood. They include the model child, the problem child, the lost child, the mascot child, or family clown. The model child hides the dysfunction of their families by becoming high achievers and overly responsible. They are the biggest enablers for their parents' addiction because they take over the roles and responsibilities of their parents. The problem child reflects the behavior of their parents. Uh, these individuals have continual and, and multiple personal problems. Uh, they often participate in early drug and alcohol addiction. Uh, they demand and get what little attention the parents can give to their family. Lost children are withdrawn. They act spaced out as if there is so much going on in their minds that they can't acknowledge anyone else. They seem uh, disconnected from life and any emotions around them. Uh, they are unable to form close relationships or intimate bonds that others, uh, because, with others because they avoid emotionally confronting issues. Family mascots or family clowns are able to avoid family problems by trivializing or making jokes of serious issues. They tend to have many friends because of their humor but only deal with life in a superficial manner because of their desire to reduce everything into something humorous. 
As adults, children of alcoholics are isolated and afraid of people and authority figures. They're, uh, they're, uh, are, they are approval seekers and lose their identity because of it. They are frightened by angry people and personal criticism. They become or marry alcoholics or other addicted people. As adults, children of alcoholics feel guilty when standing up for themselves. They become addicted to excitement and stimulation. They confuse love and pity and seek people who need to be pitied and rescued. They repress feelings from traumatic childhoods. They judge themselves harshly and have low self-esteem. They are reactors rather than initiators. Adult Children of Alcoholics is a 12-step program to help adult children sift through the emotional baggage of their childhood. They understand the disease of addiction and develop forgiveness for their parents. They put themselves on top of their priority list. They detach from love. They feel accept and uh, express feelings and build self-esteem. They learn to love themselves. Poly drug abuse, uh, aggressive treatment uh, programs need to be developed to treat all of the client's addictions. Heroin addicts uh, may also have a drinking problem. Many substance abusers may also maintain serious behavioral addictions. One problem with, uh, will trigger the other addictive behavior, allowing the addict to drift from one problem to the other. Until both problems are addressed, neither can be taken care of. Methamphetamine abusers tend to be male, white, and gay or bisexual. Uh, psychiatric symptoms that often accompany stimulant abuse include schizophrenia, paranoia, major depression, and bipolar disorder. Evaluation of the problem will have to be done in order to determine if it is caused by the abuse. Stimulant abusers tend to, to respond positively to, to, to traditional drug counseling approaches along with the following medications, antidepressants, antipsychotic medication, sedatives, nutritional supplements, dopamine agonists, anti-epileptic drugs. Long-term cravings for stimulants can be caused from a dopamine depletion. There are several medications that can stimulate dopamine release and stop the endogenous cravings. Exogenous cravings are often stronger than endogenous cravings, and can be treated with counseling, group sessions, and desensitization uh, techniques. Cocaine aversion uh, therapy also can be used. Disulfiram uh, will uh, cause aversive physical consequences if uh, cocaine is used. Abstinence is the only acceptable result from tobacco cessation therapy. Failure rate for tobacco cessation is higher than any other addictive substance. 70% of, of smokers want to quit. Only 46% attempt to quit each year. Success rates for the type of pharmacological treatment include nicotine patches, 17.7%, nicotine inhaler, 22.8%, nicotine gum, 23.7%, Zyban, 30.5%, Nicotine spray, 30.5%. Uh, combination of any two, 28.6%. Chantix, 44%. Nicotine patches work so well because they give a steady rate of release of nicotine. The ease of compliance, uh, lack of toxic effects to tissues, tissues in the mouth, lungs and digestive tract. Uh, problems include cost and ability to alter the amount being absorbed, the length of time it takes to raise the nicotine level, about four to six hours. Uh, if the user is smoking while wearing the patch, it may raise the plasma nicotine levels to dangerous levels. Nicotine gum has the advantage of raising the nicotine level rapidly and maintaining it for a number of minutes, about 15 to 30, which curbs the craving. The user seems to have more control over the dosage than with the patch. The user can chew too much gum and get an adverse reaction. The gum irritates the mucosal tissue. The gum supports an oral addiction. Nicotrol, a nicotine nasal spray, is self-administered and reaches the brain in three to five minutes. It relieves the craving in a short time. 
Uh, the disadvantages to its use include irritation to the nasal passage, and it reinforces nicotine addiction. Nicotrol also has an inhaler that allows the fastest relief for nicotine craving without inhaling all the other destructive chemicals in cigarettes. Nicotine lozenges actually contain 60% tobacco and deliver one milligram of nicotine and can be used wherever the individual cannot smoke. Withdrawal symptoms for nicotine include anxiety, depression, and craving. These can be reduced by using medications, Chantix, Zyban, benzodi benzodiazepines, buspirone, um, Prozac, and Clonidine. Tobacco cessation therapy is similar to that of any psychoactive substance, but has a lower rate of success at from 15 to 30 percent. The techniques used include desensitizing the smoker to the environment, practicing alternate methods of calming oneself, avoid environments where smoking is rampant, find other ways of getting the small rush or mild euphoria, teach the use of this physiological uh, physiology of nicotine, and the medical consequences of smoking or chewing tobacco. Teach the user the extraordinary benefits of quitting. Sorry, I needed a drink. <clears throat> Heroin detoxification is done with methadone and buprenorphine, where they are administered in place of the heroin and then slowly tapered off. After detoxification, naltrexone will be administered to decrease cravings and ensure abstinence. Follow-up treatment is conducted in individual counseling sessions, group sessions, and self-help groups. The individual will be required to attend counseling sessions daily for four to eight weeks after detoxification. The key to recovery from opioid addiction is learning a new lifestyle. Methadone replacement therapy was used by two, uh, 200,000 uh, heroin addicts in 1,069 methadone maintenance clinics in 2005. Methadone is ideal for heroin addiction because it is longer lasting but not so, as strong, allowing the addict to slowly decrease usage without the withdrawal symptoms. Methadone can be dispensed without the danger of high-risk lifestyle that has led to infection of IV drug users with HIV and hepatitis C. However, there are many in the treatment community that do not like treating one addiction with another, uh, with another drug. Buprenorphine uh, is used to treat heroin addiction through a high-dose sublingual tablet. At high doses, buprenorphine uh, acts as an opioid receptor antagonist. Subutex is used during the early stages of detoxification, and subuzone is used during the maintenance phase. Subuzone can be used to, to stabilize the user uh, when they are detoxifying for methadone maintenance. Sedative and tranquilizer abusers tend uh, to be older, white, and female. 41% of tranquilizer abusers and 33% of sedative abusers in treatment report concurrent alcohol use, while 18% report the use of marijuana. Most detoxification of sedative hypnotic addiction requires substitution therapy. This is done mostly with long-duration phenobarbital. Butabarbital may be substituted for phenobarbital and dilantin, tegretol, or neurontin uh, may be administered to prevent seizures. This type of medical uh, management must be done daily. Abstinence of sedative hypnotics requires uh, intensive pr uh, participation in group, individual, and educational counseling. Some addicts report bizarre taste and visual distortions for several months, some report violent mood swings uh, to rage or anger. Uh, the rebound withdrawal symptoms are reported by some addicts for several months after the initial withdrawal despite total abstinence. SSRIs and Buspar are sometimes used to address the underlying psychiatric problems that led to the use of sedative hypnotics in the first place. 21.5% of all treatment admissions are due to alcohol. In 17.5% of the cases, there was a concurrent abuse taking place. 
61% of the time the concurrent abuse substance was marijuana. Alcoholics, uh, more than any other addicts, have a hard time admitting that they have a problem. They are in denial. Part of this is due to the interference between alcohol and judgment. They don't see the association between alcohol and their problems. Detoxification from alcohol is one of the more medically dangerous detoxifications of any of the psychoactive substances. For an individual coming off alcohol, the withdrawal symptoms are very uncomfortable. Delirium tremens, uh, which includes confusion, hallucination, agitation, uncontrollable tremors, and paranoia. Seizures, uh, these symptoms begin two to three days after the last drink and begin to dissipate after five days. Alcohol uh, withdrawals can be treated with barbiturates, benzodiazepines, librium, uh, peraldehyde, uh, chloral hydrate, phenothiazines, antabuse, naltrexone, and camprol. Counseling is usually in the form of uh, group meetings such as Alcoholics Anonymous. Psychedelic abusers are usually white, males, and under the age of 24. Since only marijuana lends itself to daily use, the treatment is most often focused on problems that result from the abuse, intoxication, mental disorders, family dynamics, social consequences. Often the initial medical emergency that has to be handled is a bad trip or an acute anxiety reaction, paranoia, fear over loss of control, feelings of grandeur leading to dangerous behavior. One technique to use in this circumstance is the ARRRT talk-down technique. If the technique doesn't seem to be working, medical intervention is needed. PCP and ketamine users will sometimes display violent or even belligerent behavior, even with ARRRT. And this is what ARRT stands for. Acceptance. First, gain the user's trust and confidence. Uh, reduce stimuli, uh, get, the abuser, get the user to quiet, uh, non-threatening environment, uh, reassure, educate the user that they are experiencing a bad trip, assure them that they are in a safe place with safe people, and they will be all right. Rest, help the user relax, use stress in, uh, reduction techniques such as slow, deep breathing or relaxing muscle groups, and let them rest. Talk down, discuss peaceful, non-threatening subjects with the, with the user, avoid any topic which seems to create more anxiety or a strong reaction. And of course, I've used this uh, several times uh, when working um, in, in a clinic, uh, the rural health clinic in Oklahoma and uh, working in the emergency room. Uh, usually we try, to <laughs> we try to get them away from everybody else. Uh, the, uh, other people tend to, uh, to uh, irritate them. Um, I talk to them. I seem to have a voice that puts people to sleep, uh, as you probably have noticed. <laughs> and so my voice seems to work. With an increase uh, of the THC in uh, marijuana, more and more individuals have entered treatment for marijuana dependence. Symptoms of marijuana dependence include sleep disturbances, appetite disturbances, headaches, irritability, anxiety, emotional depression, mild tremors and muscular dis discomfort. Cravings for marijuana may last for months or even years. As with the most of the behavioral addictions, gamblers tend to be in denial about their problem, feeling that it is more a cash flow problem rather than an addiction. Most gamblers won't admit that their gambling is a problem until they have hit bottom and they seek treatment to placate their creditors. Gamblers experience withdrawal symptoms that are similar to alcoholism, restlessness, irritability, anger, abdominal pain, headaches, diarrhea, cold sweats, insomnia, tremors, apprehension about well-being, and intensive desire to return to gambling. The key to effective eating disorder treatment is early intervention before any permanent damage is done. Diagnose and treat any uh, medical complications, the client should be encouraged to exercise and eat a balanced diet, use therapies to change false attitudes and perceptions, encourage attendance at Overeaters Anonymous or other 12-step groups, 
use behavioral and group therapies to encourage weight gain or loss, enhance self-esteem, independence, and development, uh, treat and educate the whole family. Even with intense treatment, only 54% respond to treatment after 12 years. Severely ill anorexics must be hospitalized. Nutritional recovery will take as long as 10 to 12 weeks. The complexities of anorexia require a team approach. The patient will not improve their eating behavior until the underlying depression is treated. Of the three eating problems, bulimia is the most difficult to detect because the sufferers tend to be in a normal weight range. Unfortunately, due to the intake of foods with high fat and carbohydrate content, atherosclerosis and diabetes are often the result of the binge eating. Treatment will require a team of professionals, an internist to advise on medical uh, problems, a nutritionist to help with diet and eating patterns, a psychotherapist to change attitudes and behaviors, a psychopharmacologist uh, to monitor psychoactive medications. People suffering from binge eating disorders seek treatment for both physiological and psychological underlying causes. Current treatment include counseling sessions that focus on changing attitudes and ideals, examine underlying traumas, recognize stress and environmental cues that lead to unhealthy eating habits, pharmacological treatment such as SSRIs, naltrexone, anti-seizure medication, uh, seizure, uh, surgical intervention, bariatric or gastric uh, bypass surgery. And these are the different types of uh, psychiatric, uh, bariatric surgery procedures. Individuals with sex addiction can, uh, tend to feel extreme shame, guilt, anxiety, and depression. Organizations like Sexaholics Anonymous alleviate the negative feelings by showing the sufferers that there are millions with similar problems and that their behavior is not unique to them. Mental health professionals realize that the abstinence model will not work with internet problems since the connectedness has become universal in today's world. Most mental health professionals suggest a harm reduction model. Ten suggestions that might help internet addiction. Uh, move the, your computer to a different room. Uh, never go online alone. Create an internet usage log. To break the isolation, tell people about your problem. Exercise regularly to overcome sedentary habits. Never use an alias. Take an internet holiday. Stop dwelling and obsessing on internet use. Help someone else control their internet addiction. Get professional help. Male treatment admissions outnumber female admissions 2 to 1, 68% uh, to 32%. Males are more likely to enter substance treatment through the criminal justice system. However, women tend to progress to addiction more rapidly, die at a younger age, are less likely to ask for help or receive it. Men are more likely to blame external events outside their control for, for their problems, while women blame the problems on themselves. Treatment often focuses on attacking the denial that many male addicts employ. This merely reinforces the self-blame in women. Men require confrontation, but women actually do better with more supportive and less confrontational treatment techniques. Women have to be supported with child care and transportation, whereas these problems are rarely issues with men. The three greatest barriers for women seeking addiction treatment, inability to admit the problem, about 39%, lack of emotional support from family members, 32%, inadequate child care while in treatment, 29%. The earlier the onset of drug use in the individual, the more likely they will have a pro a drug problems in the future. Delaying alcohol or drug use into the 20s almost completely truncates the possibility of chemical dependence. Adolescents suffer from drug use because less body water fat than adults, immature enzyme metabolism systems. If genes dictate addiction, they become addicted immediately after use. They're more vulnerable to environmental stressors. 
Uh, they have had less time to develop life skills and healthy coping mechanisms. The brain develops slowly from back to front. The brain is an adult until age 25. Adolescents are less able to control compulsive drug use. Treatment for adolescents requires that the regimen be broken into smaller, more quickly achieved segments because of a shortened attention span and the inability to process complex information. Adolescents tend to exaggerate the benefits of an action and denigrate the risks. Adolescents are less likely to accept the advice of an adult over the logic of their peers. Interventions must include peers. Adolescents tend to use the drugs their peers are using. Drug use is a status symbol. Rave drugs were popular in the 1990s, peaking uh, in 2001 and declining since. By 2005, 11.5 million Americans had tried MDMA. This included junior high school students as well as college and high school students. The present generation are more likely to abuse prescription medications. There is a strong association between prescription drug use and the use of alcohol. Adolescents who abuse prescription medications are many times more likely to drift into more serious addictions. Currently, there are 37 million Americans 65 and older. Baby boomers were the adolescents in the cusp of the drug movement in the United States. They will be more likely to abuse prescription drugs and alcohol in the future. Of the seniors who pre present themselves for treatment, 80% are treated for alcohol abuse. Only 17% of the 80% are using a secondary illicit substance. Reasons the elderly abuse drugs, increasing number of illnesses exposes them to more and more prescription drugs. Uh, physical resiliency declines with age, allowing psychoactive substances to have a greater impact. Physicians maintain many misperceptions about the elderly. Grandpa or grandma won't abuse drugs or alcohol. It's too late to address addiction. Seniors have earned the right to abuse drugs. They're either too smart or too burned out to, to treat. There is not enough time to treat the addiction before they die. Inadequate training in geriatrics and dependency issues. There are age-related physiological changes that increase drug toxicity, decrease gastrointestinal acid secretion, motility and blood flow, decreased lean body mass, decreased plasma albumin to bind to drugs, decreased hepatic blood flow and increased hepatic cell damage, decreased metabolism due to decreased enzymes in the stomach and liver, one-half to two-thirds of the metabolic rate of middle-aged adults, decreased kidney function, increased receptor site sensitivity, resulting in more extreme reactions in the brain. There is inadequate social and support services for the elderly to alleviate the feelings of isolation and loneliness, retirement, ageism and inactivity, rejection, disrespect and abandonment, relationship problems, death of spouse or, and friends, decreased satisfaction with the quality of life, financial and housing stress, coming to terms with chronic illness, pain or impending death, loss of physical appearance and abilities, Frustration over memory loss, the community enables the elderly to manage their own problems. Treatment for the elderly takes a different tack than for the general population. The elderly react more positively in groups than individual treatment. They respond better in groups uh, their own age, but can flourish in groups with mixed ages as well. Withdrawal symptoms for the elderly tend to be more severe, but can usually be managed successfully. The elderly are more likely to suffer cognitive impairment from their substance use. African Americans represent 12% of the U.S. population, but 22.1% of the admissions at substance abuse treatment facilities. Male African Americans outnumber females in treatment 3 to 1. Female admissions are more likely to involve hard drugs, while males are more likely to involve alcohol. African Americans seek treatment for marijuana use at a high level, 22% of male admissions and 6.6% of female admissions. 
Unfortunately, African-American com uh, completion rates are below the national average at 17.5%. Reasons African-Americans have lower completion rates, higher pain threshold uh, means that they are less likely to reach out for help and therefore enter therapy with more severe addictions. In inner city neighborhoods, drugs represent an economic resource, making them more acceptable in the community. Crime is the first step into drug subculture in the inner city. Strong sense of boundaries are inter uh, where intervention is an encroachment and violates personal choice. Chemical dependency is often seen as a secondary problem to the environmental issues of living in the inner city. Conspiracy that such epidemic problems as crack and AIDS uh, and that have, been, uh, have swept through African American communities are planned genocide. The strength of the organized spirituality has helped promote recovery. Currently, 14.4% of the population is Hispanic and represent 13.7% of the population in substance abuse treatment. Alcohol is a substance that was abused to lead uh, to treatment for uh, Hispanics. 77% of admissions among Hispanics for treatment are, are male. One challenge for treatment facilities is to understand the vast diversity among Hispanics in the United States and be culturally sensitive to the different groups. This can be done by attempting to gauge the level of enculturation represented in their client. Of all the groups in the United States, Asians and Pacific Islanders represent the most diverse group. This group literally represents all but the American Indian race in the world and some of the oldest cultures in the world. Treatment has to take into account length of time in the United States as well as cultural and intergenerational conflicts in therapy. Asians are more likely to respond to licensed professionals rather than lay peers. Asian cultures tend to separate males and females, and therefore mixed groups are less effective. Protection of family honor is a high priority among most Asians, and therefore the counselor will see a high level of family enabling and rescuing that delays the addict's entry into treatment. Therefore, any treatment plan dealing with Asians must include family treatment as well. Drug use by nationality from most serious to less serious, Chinese tobacco and alcohol, Japanese alcohol, marijuana, tobacco, crack cocaine, and methamphetamines, Koreans alcohol and crack cocaine, Filipinos alcohol, marijuana, and cocaine, Vietnamese tobacco, marijuana, and alcohol, Cambodians alcohol, tobacco, crack cocaine, smokable methamphetamines. Half of all American Indians in the United States live in Arizona, but as, as a population, they represent the most diverse group of any of the racial groups. The bete noir for American Indians seems to be alcohol, as 58.5% of admissions into treatment facilities deals with alcohol as compared with only 39.2% among the general U.S. population. Successful treatment often involves being culturally sensitive to more traditional American Indians. However, since over 60% of American Indians live away from their traditional lands, level of cultural adherence should be gauged to facilitate treatment. One group that is heavily uh, represented in drug and alcohol treatment is the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community, the LGBT community. 20 to 35 percent of this community reports heavy alcohol use compared to 10 to 12 percent in the heterosexual community. Part of the LGBT lifestyle in urban settings often involves bar scenes and parties that promote drug and alcohol use. However, researchers have determined that a greater predictor of alcohol and drug abuse in the LGBT community are genetics and childhood stress. One of the difficulties in dealing with the LGBT community is involving the family of the sufferer in the treatment. Often these individuals are either in the closet or estranged from their families. The biggest obstacles to treatment are denial and lack of financial resources. Many users have delayed emotional development due to the effects of psychoactive substances, which keeps them from learning how to deal with life's problems. It is an empirical fact that brain cells are damaged when using psychoactive substances, 
which leads to cognitive deficits during the first several months of abstinence. 30 to 80 percent of substance abusers have mild to severe cognitive impairments. It is possible that some recovering uh, clients may not comprehend the interventions that are being used with them. For this reason, most difficult and abstract concepts are presented at the end of treatment when the client is more likely to, co to comprehend the concepts. And that is the end of the chapter. So I will talk to you. We have one more chapter to go that has to do with uh, uh, prescription drugs, and we'll, we'll talk about that next week.